Hi guys, today's craft I'm going to make this farmhouse chicken wire frame. I found one at uh, Hobby Lobby, a little smaller than the one I made, about two thirds of the size of the one I made, and they wanted $129. And I knew I could make it a lot cheaper. Anyway, I made this one for me, and a friend really liked it. So I'm making one for her for Christmas, so I thought I'd take you along on the steps and the price countdown for it. It's really, really cheap to make, and I've added different reefs to it for the holidays. I made it, like, I believe last spring. So it has spring reef on it, a summer reef, a Halloween reef, a fall reef, and now a Christmas one. Anyway, we'll show you okay, the steps. Okay, guys, um, this is the start. What I did was I went to the store, and I got two six feet boards, one by four, and I got two six feet, and then I had the guy there cut them down to the size I needed. So I had him cut each board down three feet, and then take that, um, cut the board down to 30 inches. So basically what it is, is I had one long board like this, and I had him cut three feet and then 30 inches, and I had a little extra. The reason I did that is, even though the boards say six feet, they're not necessarily six feet. That's why you want them to cut each board separately. That way you know you're going to have matching boards. So, three feet, and then 30 inches. And I know I'll get an exact fit by doing that. Because just because the board says six feet does not mean it's accurate. And like I said, I had a little extra board that I used for another craft. Anyway, the boards were $4.88 a piece, so we'll round it up to $5. So basically, you spent $10 in wood. So we'll put these aside, and I'm going to make them look old. So I'm going to show you how we do that. have a screwdriver, two different screwdrivers, flathead and Phillips, a hammer, and I just happen to have a, a wallpaper scraper. You can use anything that you've got. Basically, what you want to do is make the wood look old. So, I'm just going to score it. And even though you can't see it when you do it, believe me, it will show up. Ooh, it's catching. It will show up when you um, stain it. Rick, you want to do the other side? Don't go straight. Do it different angles. Not circles though. Yeah, don't do this in circles if you use this, you want to go straight. You don't want to put circles in it. Okay, and then just take your screwdriver and pound away and your hammer. And you just basically want to put dents in it. Turn your hammer as you go, that way you'll get different angles. And make sure to go randomly. You don't want a pattern. If you use the uh, wallpaper scraper, you need to get a paper towel and brush off. Brush your board because it'll bring up like little pieces of wood. And this basically just takes it off because they're just hanging on. So you just basically brushing them off your board. like little splitters that you definitely want to get off because you don't want them in your fingers or anything. Okay, and that's how easy it is. Okay, guys, you can put any stain that you want on here. We're using a ch cherry. Is it? Yeah, cherry. Yeah, cherry. We're going to put that on first, and then we're going to put a gray over the top of it because I want it to look like old barn wood. So, what you're going to do is just brush it on, okay, and then you're going to come back with your towel and just wipe it off. And as you can, I don't know if you can see or not, but it's going into all those cracks and crevices that we made. And 
and make sure to get your sides of your board. And like I said, this doesn't have to be neat because remember, you're just going to wipe this back off. And like I said, you can use any type of stain you want. I just want mine to look like barn wood because it looked pretty just like this with the cherry. And if you want it darker, just leave it on. And if your boards are darker in some and lighter in the others, that's perfect. Because you, for the farmhouse deal, you want it to look old. And wood does not weather the same. Oh, we gotta get the size on that one, honey. Here. And don't forget to get in your little crevices you made in your wood. This is pretty. You know, guys, if you didn't want the old, the old barn wood effect, cherry is actually very pretty on this. And this is just pine, cheap pine. Like I said, I spent a little less than $10 on this wood. Okay. Oh, one other thing I want to tell you that we found is look at your measurements on your wood because we started by buying the big long boards for you to cut those down. But we found out we'd have to buy a big long one and the small one that ended up, the big one was $8 and the small one was 6 so it ended up being $14. Where by buying two small ones at $48 a piece, we saved a bunch of money and got the cuts that we needed. And we already had two pieces like this size of wasted wood. So do your math and figure out what works best for it being cheap for you. But for us, like I said, two six foot boards work perfectly for this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish standing these. Don't forget, do your sides. And you can do your back too if you want. That's totally up to you. For me, the back's going to be facing the wall, so I don't really worry about wasting the stain. But once again, that's a preference. But as soon as you put it on, wipe it off. Because you don't want it real dark. Especially since we're going to put the gray over it. But if you're not doing the barn wood, you know what? Do what works for you. Okay, we will bring you back when we get this on and we let it dry. Okay, guys, we're on to the next step. Uh, point of fact, on your stain, put the lid on it. Because when I was waiting for these to dry, I decided to make lunch. And I kicked the stain and it went all over the floor. Not a pretty picture. So just a heads up, don't do what I did. Okay, now we're going to take our gray stain and we're going to put it over the top very quickly. And then you want to wipe it off because you don't want it really, really dark. So you want to wipe as much off of it as you can. You notice I didn't go all the way up because I wanted to get it off as soon as I could. Okay, probably put it in streaks like this. And then take your board there we go and just bring it down and that gives you your old barn technique like old barn wood do that one more time for you just take it you don't have to do the whole area just do like this get it on there and then wipe it off and you can always add more remember you can't take off but you can add It just gives it a really nice texture. It makes it end up looking like barn wood. And if you have dark areas and light areas, that's what you want because, like I said, wood doesn't weather the same. dark spots it would not look like barn wood okay 
Oh, that looks nice. Yep. And if you notice, this one's lighter than this. I'm happy about that because it gives you plenty of texture. No, we're not done. We're going to get the sides. You can probably use your rag for that. Oh, yeah, the rag works perfect for that. There we go. The rag, well, oh, I need a little bit on here. i use the brush. My uh, rag got a little dry. There we go. I'm gonna get the side of this one for me. Whoops, can wipe it off. Okay guys, our stain has dried and now we're going to go on to the next step which is putting it together. Okay, what you're going to want to do is you're going to take your smaller 30 inch boards, put them on the top and the bottom and you're going to want your bigger boards in the middle. Okay? Bring them out to the edge. I gotta get the edge up there, baby. Okay? And we got these little metal brackets. I didn't show this part. They were three dollars for four of them. And I just spray painted them black. They're just a little L-shaped bracket. Like I said, real thin, and it was $3 for a set of four of them. What we're going to do is you're going to put them in your corners, and you're going to want three of the holes to fit your bottom one. So, uh, sorry, position it where you have one hole here, one here, one here, and one here. Okay, and try to get it in the middle. Okay, and before you uh, screw them in, go ahead and put them on and make sure that's where you want them. Okay? This way it's just better to go ahead and check beforehand. There we go. Okay. Oh. It doesn't work that way. I think it's this way. They have a little thing on them. Nope. Oh, nope. The other way. These have a, uh, a little, oh, counter sink on them so that's why I'm having to look to make sure that little counter sink isn't on them this is why you position them first to make sure they're right what I mean by counter sink is they have a little um, what writing on them I guess is the best way to put it what you say writing yeah, the counter sink yeah no it's just like a bevel oh it's bevel, bevel. Okay. Where the screw sits flush. Oh, but there's a white writing part. Do I have this on right? Looks like it, huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you want them off to the side a little bit, or do you want them centered? I want them uh, centered, like we did on mine. Okay. I like it centered better. Yeah. So let's center them. Make sure they're straight. Okay. Now you can use an electric drill or you can do it by hand. And all you're going to do is take your screws and make sure you're flush and screw them in. Okay, and then what you're going to want to do is take a black uh, Sharpie and you're going to want to color in the silver 
screws so that they are not showing. Or you can leave them silver. I like to cover them in. This is pretty much it's up to you what you want to do. Okay. We're going to go around, finish putting these on, and I'm going to um, paint the little silver screws. And then we'll have one final step, and it'll be put together. Okay, guys. Now we're going to put the chicken wire on. This didn't cost me anything because I, we built a chicken coop and we had so much chicken wire left that this, this is a good way to use it up. Okay, you're going to decide which one you want to be your top before you staple your chicken wire because part of your top you're not going to staple on your chicken wire. Okay? You want to staple it down and then cut it. And this part does take two people because you're going to where ours has been rolled up, you're going to want to work it out. Come on, baby. Okay. Cat. Which one do you want to work? What? What, what, where? Your wire. Oh, well, Which see these you two? You're going to want this kind of even. We're going to move it this way. Well, we can move See the it lines? This way too. Yeah, that's why I said I want to move it this way just a little bit. There we go, make our lines kind of even. See where the lines go down? There we go. Yeah, yep, because you got lines in your, your thing, so make that as even as we possibly can. Okay, staple the bottom and then we'll go to the top. Keep an opening at the top. You're going to want to keep an opening at the top, in the middle, because that's where you're going to put your ribbon through so that you can uh, do your reefs. She has plenty of room for whatever size ribbon, ribbon she wants to use. Okay, how much do we, we don't need that big of an opening? So put a couple more in. Just make sure the middle. It's pretty well open, which would be this area right in here. Okay, and then right over here. Okay, that should give her an opening for whatever size ribbon. I don't think she's going to use anything bigger than that. Okay. Yep. Add one more. That should be the middle, huh? We can probably add one more. Where? Yeah. And one right here. I don't think she's going to use a 12 inch ribbon. Okay. Our next step is to take the wire cutters and you're want, going to cut all around it. Okay, guys. After you cut your um, screen, screen, your chicken wire, you want to take the ends that are pointy and pull them up into your frame. Or what are you doing? Just twisting them, baby? Yeah, twisting them into the frame. Or they're pointing in toward the frame. Twist them where they're pointing in towards the frame so that nobody gets hurt and just pound them down. That's just so, you know, you don't stick yourself if you're taking them off the wall or what have you. Anyway, we went in 
about an inch, inch and a half all the way around the frame and cut the excess off. And if you can see we left our little opening. And what's the tape for? Wrap these where the ribbon is. Oh, that's right. You got to wrap the ones where the ribbon is. That way you don't have to worry about it hurting anybody. We don't want anybody getting hurt. And you're not going to see that black tape. You can use white tape. You know, this is just what we had. And it's basically so nobody gets picked take, or poked. Okay, this is what we've got. It's a little picture holder frame. Or holder for a picture, right? And we're going to put it on there. But first you've got to measure. And make sure you get the middle of the frame. And we poked the, um, where you can see where we left it open. So you'd be able to see that. Generally you're going to press it down. And you want to find the middle of your board. Which should probably be, since it's 3 feet. Oh no, that one's 30 inches, huh? So that would be 15 mark. Now remember, always measure twice. I know you measure twice. I'm just telling them. Always measure twice. So that you know you've got it accurate. It's a lot less time to measure twice than it is to take something out and start over. Okay, right now he's me he's measuring from the piece to the outside to make sure it's even. Because you definitely want it hanging even on the wall. Okay, you want to push the top part down? Well, no, leave it up because I'm going to put something on it. I'm going to put a wreath and a ribbon on this. You don't have to put a wreath on it. You can also put um, antique... Uh, items I don't know pretty much pictures whatever you want I just sometimes put a quilt in the middle of mine and it looks really really nice but you can put anything in the middle of these you want but since it's Christmas I'm going to put a Christmas wreath in the middle of it for her anyway that's how it looks right now I think it's gorgeous on its own but you know you can also put like a nest with chickens on it anything you want it's you know the sky's the limit Anyway, let me get my stuff and we'll come back and I'll show you how I put the wreath on. Wreath. I cannot say that word. Okay, I'm going to show you how you do your ribbon. This is why you leave it open. So you can stick it through here. Also, don't worry if it covers up your little hook thing because it's still going to hang on the wall. Okay, baby, you want to turn that around while I go get the, the reef? Okay. Take this like this. And I'm going to try to get it in the middle of the frame. And then tie it. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to be at an angle. Okay. I know this is wired ribbon, but it's not that easy. You know what? I think I'm going to do something a little different. Because I have a real pretty flower that I like. Turn this around so it hangs down like this. There we go. Like I said, I have a real pretty flower that I like. This has like a little clip on it, as you can see right here. And I'm just going to clip it. Let me go ahead and clip this. Definitely want to use a uh, 
for this a ribbon that has wire in it. It works much better. There we go. Oh, I like that a lot. I'm just going to leave it like that. I like that. Anyway, this is her Christmas, Tanya's Christmas present. And these are just little picks that I just stuck in here because if she wants to change it out, she can. So like I said, they're just little picks. And it's finished. And that's how you make a farmhouse chicken wire frame. And like I said, you can put anything in the middle of it you like. I just went this route because being Christmas, I thought this would be great. And on mine, I put different roofs up all year long. And I've also put a little small quilt in the middle of it. But the sky's the limit as far as decorating, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I think I covered everything, didn't I? Yep. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye.